Hello and welcome to Photo City and I'm here with one of the prime movers of this event. First question, why Paternoster Square? Oh, it's quite funny really. Um, I've been teaching and working from Paternoster Square for about 11 years. In the last five years I've been teaching street photography from Paternoster Square. The very first time we ever came here um, we were asked to stop taking photographs here um, because it was um, privately owned and they didn't want you taking photographs here. So. Uh, uh, after a while that changed and it became put back to walkways and um, the guys that now run Payton Oster Square, the security and everything else asked me if we could put an exhibition on here to basically show photography and show London photography and to show that you could actually come to Payton Oster Square now and actually take photographs so that's basically why here. So you talk about doing uh, photo walks, I have been on one of your photo walks. For people that are un uninitiated what is a photo walk? A photo walk, um, I do food, I teach as well, but a photo walks are just a, a group of people that get together, that go for a walk with cameras and take photographs and sort of put the social back in, out of social media back out onto the streets again so people can talk to each other. So what's the difference between going on a photo walk and going into a workshop or going into a, an indoor environment? Um, I think it's much more um, relaxing. Um, people can enjoy it, go out for a walk, talk and enjoy their cameras and photography more. Um, when you're actually teaching in a teacher environment in a classroom, people feel like they're being spoken at instead of spoken to. So I think it's a lot more relaxing to get people out and about in the city. Yeah. Now, this is called Photo City and we're talking about street photography quite a lot, but is this just a street photography exhibition? It's more an exhibition of street photography and photography from London basically so it's it's more about um, artists work from London and hopefully we'll be able to grow on that in the future as well. So does a city or the environment that photographers work in does that affect what they photograph how they photograph what their art turns out to be? Oh I think so yes I mean every different city is different and London's very relaxed around photography in spite of the fact people think there's a big security issues it's one of the most relaxed um, cities to actually take photographs of people and things um, you go to some cities Liverpool's great as well but you go to some cities and people don't even know what a camera is they're not used to tourism it's a lot more difficult and people are a lot more skeptical as well and there's nothing actually to be worried about. I just wanted to talk a bit about your photography because you're one of the exhibitors here as well as one of the people that's been driving the whole exhibition. Uh, the thing that struck me about your work compared to the other photographers was, and it is quite typical for photographers, there's lots of black and white work here. Yours, and the, I know there are people like Peter Dench who's very colour. Yours is a mixture of black and white and colour. Does colour have a role? What, what role does colour have in street photography? What's the point of choosing colour and choosing black and white? Well, funnily enough, I'm a black and white photographer, so I've been photographing black and white all my life, up until the beginning of this year. At the beginning of this year, I decided to explore colour, and I think it get, you get to a certain age where you want to explore colour. Colours are a lot more difficult in street photography, and making primary colours and colours like red, yellow and blue work together um, in a scene and bringing everything together is really, really difficult. Um, so I've been exploring that this year. Whether I stay doing colour or I go back to black and white at the end of the year, I don't know yet. But in digital, um, colours become a lot more difficult because you can't get any consistency. So when you're, when you're looking at a scene now and you're taking the photograph, are you deciding before the shot's taken whether it's going to be colour and black and white or are you looking on your computer the next day and deciding then whether it's a colour or black and white shot? I shoot for black and white or colour and this year obviously I've been doing a year of colour so I've been shooting colour only um, but if it's a, a normal day I will decide by the colours in the scene whether I'm going to use it as a colour image or a black and white image. So when you're deciding that something's a colour image what is it that you see that makes it colour? It's got to tell a story but then the colours have got to be consistent with that story otherwise the colours will distract from the story and throw the person's mind's eye off. You said that you originally and until this year only shot in black and white uh, is there a reason why you decided that black and white was your medium? Um, I've started with film, started developing and using film, so basically all the time I spent time in darkroom and everything else, black and white was my medium that I used to use. And also it's a storytelling medium, so at a very early age I learned to see in black and white 
and use that storytelling medium with what I saw. Um, and when the digital age came along, I just managed to be able to do exactly the same with the digital camera and not take too much attention to what's on the screen or in the viewfinder. Now we've been talking about street photography. This is a city exhibition. We're talking about city artists. Is it essential for street photography to be street photography for the subject to be a city? Not really, no. It could be a beach. I mean, um, Martin Parr did uh, a holiday resorts, etc. Um, I think it can be anything, as long as it's, you know, I, I was going to say, as long as it contains people, but that's not necessarily the case. A street image is sometimes very difficult to define in a single conversation. Now, this is a photographer's and a photography exhibition in that we've got lots of photography stalls here. I've seen lots of people with cameras coming and chatting. So I am going to ask you, what is your favourite camera? What is the camera that you take out on the street? Basically, it's Fujifilm X-Pro2. That's what I use nearly all the time. Um, and I've been with Fujifilm now for about six years. Um, and I was Nikon before that. And um, basically, I was looking for something easier to carry around. And rangefinder style camera is the style of camera that I prefer now. Um, it's just a lot easier to use for many reasons. Um, but that's the camera I use and that's the camera I'll be using for the foreseeable future. It's just something I've fallen in love with. Yeah. Uh, and finally, and this is a question that I think I'm going to ask every photographer uh, that's here today because they're street photographers. And it's actually for my daughter because my daughter loves street photography. Uh, she hates missing a shot. <laughs> Absolutely hates it. it can, she can throw a tantrum for half an hour because she's missed a photography shot. Uh, She's 11, by the way, so I think it's fair, it's fair enough. How do you deal with seeing a shot, maybe getting the camera up too late or getting home and looking at the shot and it hasn't worked? How do you deal with the fact that it's part of the nature of street photography that you're going to miss some of those shots? I think with practice, if you go out every day of the week and you've got a camera in your hand all the time, you don't miss so many, but you will miss some. And you'll see something happen, but in a fraction of a second, everything changes in the scene and you will miss it. And I think that's the important thing about that is that drives you on to go out and shoot more and more and more. I think that, um, you know, at the end of the day, I've got uh, nine images that I have as favourite images. So I go out every day looking for that one special moment to be able to capture that moment. And that is the driving force. By missing, 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 then you create that one eventually. Yeah. So if you go out and take a photograph, or you go out photographing, how many good or great photographs in a day do you consider to be like the minimum to say it's been a successful day? One or three. What, between one and three. Between Sometimes. one and three, not one or three, yeah, but between one. Two's included. <laughs> Two's included, but if you, um, if you get three, it's a good yeah. day. If you get one, it's a good day. So um, some, I've, I went out for three months looking for an image for Fujifilm to go to Japan, and in three months I walked 20 miles a day for a week, and I was sat down and I was absolutely exhausted. I hadn't got a single image in a week. So sometimes it gets like that, but then you get up and you just go and do it all over again. Wow, that's amazing. Uh, so I think, I know that your exhibition is just behind us. I know a lot of the photographers are standing by their exhibitions talking to the, uh, to the viewers as they come and take a look at the photography. So I'm going to let you, let you get back and talk to some of the punters. Great, thanks very much. Thank you very much.